Everybody has comfort in their kingdom. And the homeless people out there begging for money and, and doing their drugs, that's their kingdom. It's raining, I'm hungry. I used to be able to make a lot more money just panhandling. I was just trying to get clean at that point and wanted off the street. My life was in and out of the dumps. Um, sleeping at Carl's Jr., sleeping on BART, sleeping in crackhead hotels. It was a horrible time. A couple of outreach workers came up and they were like, you know, are you hungry? Do you need a sandwich? need some socks, you know? And like, it was like, yes, yes, yes. I need all these things right now. Outreach is going out into the communities and, and we have a certain route that we do at the same time, four nights a week, and going out and just talking to people and handing out supplies. We're there just checking in with people, seeing how they're doing, giving them candy, condoms, introducing ourselves to new people, um, and just building relationships. Outreach is the foundation of what At The Crossroads does, and it's the first place where we meet and make connections with anybody who's going to be applying with At The Crossroads. Before we go out, we uh, fill up our bags with different supplies, and then we hit the streets. We're really just walking and looking for people who fit our age group, and if we see someone who we think is a potential client, is a young person, we try to engage them. Do you need any condoms or boots tonight? I wish I had sex and so on. It's right. not fun. Mm. Mm. That's right. That's, That's not what I'm going to tell y'all right now? Yeah. <laughs> you want yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm going to get out wipe my face. Uh, how are people using to wipe their face? So when you're out there, it's just a really cool experience to be able to go out and talk to all different types of people and get to know them and be respected on the streets and just be able to laugh with people and joke with people and get into their lives every night. So it's a really positive part of my day is just a really great thing. Early, I was like, oh, I like it. It's a nice one. It's strong. <laughs> I'm asking you everything. You never know. You never know. Okay. What kind of hey, um, Man, this, they don't matter. So don't matter. that don't pop. <laughs> How's it going out here, though? Yeah, everything's okay. Everything's okay. You know, it's election time, man. It's so much crazy stuff going on. Everybody going to jail. Everybody getting killed. Everybody, everything, man. Our mission is to help homeless kids, and um, the reason that After Crossroads does outreach and meets is to meet kids where they're at and to to go to them. And it's just a way of making a, a first uh, connection with them. But they don't push anything on you. Like they offer things that everybody needs and everybody wants when like they're out on the street, like when they're doing outreach. We always like say what we offer, like we have groceries in the office, we have clothes, we can take you out to lunch once a week. And some clients just want that and they don't necessarily want to talk to you and that's okay. I called to remind you, I left you a message. Sometimes clients do use you as a counselor and a person to come to every week and discuss different things in their lives and get it off their chest. I guess one of my biggest things that I struggle with are like little insecurities like I'm a guitar player and my fingernails are all dirty and my fingers are all dirty and I mean it's a full-time job to like you know achieve wellness and to like try to like kind of keep like some kind of element of not looking homeless it takes work you know you've got to like do laundry you know you shave in the bathroom even right now I feel a little unkept. You can go to like the library and watch different films and stuff and that would be another thing that if you wanted to do, too. Naomi never, like, says, you should do something like this. She says, well, you might want to try something like this, or, you know, we could always try doing this. You know, she suggests things that, like, sometimes it's just a seed that's planted, and then I go, yeah, actually, like, that's a good idea by them setting their own agendas and figuring it out themselves, then by the time that they've come to the conclusion that maybe they want to get um, off drugs or off the streets or whatever, they're more likely to succeed at that because they've made that decision for themselves and they're in the place in their lives that allows them to do that successfully. 
and they make you feel real comfortable. Now when I see Naomi, I feel like I'm sitting down to lunch with an old friend. Or you just, it really just seems like you're at home. And when you don't have a home, like that's something that really helps. You guys get any word on the uh, housing situation? Well, they said now that they're having trouble finding a, a place in the mission. In the mission? So uh, we might have to out move like, out of the mission. Of the mission which... Our first goal is to meet kids on the streets um, at their point of need. Then if those young people that we meet have need for like some of our resources, then we have the opportunity to offer them the one-to-ones. The general one-to-one -one is, you say, a client would come to the office, which has like all our food supplies and hygiene supplies and bigger supplies that we just can't physically carry on outreach. I don't, yeah, my old therapist I used to love, like I was really at that point just basically lost, I, you know, on the street. I, uh -huh. and she really helped me. Um, we can talk about anything. We don't have an agenda. And what we talk about and what we do would be totally up to what the client needs. Yeah, I'm gonna call her tonight. I'm just gonna be like, I miss you. Now, she felt like, and you felt like she needed you to make some changes, right? Yeah. Do you feel like you made those changes? Not completely. I mean, if I was to see her, it'd go a long way. You know, I don't wanna uh -huh. wait anymore. And I could really get, I could diss away with everything if she would just, just trust me. If she just came, I'd be like, I'm cool. Like all these numbers, we're gonna delete them, we're gonna rip them up. You'll never have to worry about me about that. It's a hour, it's an hour and a half where they have of unfiltered being able to let it all out. And that somebody's listening and not just listening, uh, hoping that they're, they're gonna stop soon, but listening because we're interested and we wanna know and we're, we know we're consciously giving them the time and, and the space to be able to vent and let it all out. I'm gonna go, uh, we're walking up a couple of blocks uh, to South NS and we're going to go meet with a um, client at their place. Um, we're gonna go meet with Margarita. Repeat it again, I didn't forget. <laughs> Hola. I knew I wanted to leave drugs. I knew I wanted counseling. I knew I needed help to rebuild my life with my kids. Mainly getting off of drugs was my biggest issue. When I've needed a referral, he's looked it up for me. Now I could talk to him about everything, and he'd just listen to me, give me advice. Ivan has impacted my life like crazy, you know. I trust him, and that was a big issue I had with men, trust. And he's just wonderful. Ugh, he's good. It's, I've rarely seen somebody fight so hard for themselves and for their children and for this. And I mean, to deal with it for how long you've been dealing with it and to keep, to be able to continue to keep and not give up on that. Oh my amazing, God, don't girl. Get me wrong. Amazing. There have been times, right? And there have been times where I thought, damn, what if I just go back there and just do, you know, this will all go away, but it'll just be temporary. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If I go get high. It'll just go be temporary. And then who ends up suffering are the kids. So then I have to take a step back and say, wait a minute. I've come this far. I'm not going to lose this. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to Oh, my God. I'm not. That has been one of the... Um, things that I've learned the most over the time of working with people, our relationship stays the same regardless of where they're at. Like whether they're attaining goals and even if they're not at the moment attaining the goals that they may want for themselves, our relationship is still great. He doesn't look at me as different. Like if I were to fall, he wouldn't judge me, you know what I'm saying? But just knowing that I have that support, like he's there regardless and that just motivates me to, I'm not gonna fall, I'm not gonna go back to, you know, the streets. I can't, I can't lose. Failure is not an option to me no more. But the white man, it isn't. That's nice.
a cooker kit. Cooker kit? Uh, antibiotic cooker kit. And... I was a drug addict and a prostitute, and I had a lot of struggles. I was in an abusive relationship with a man that I thought was my boyfriend, but really all along he was my pimp. And I didn't realize that till later on in life. And um, they came out and did outreach to me. I started talking to Rob then when I was 17 years old. I'm 27 now. The dominant stereotype of who a homeless kid is, is white, is dirty, is wearing either punk clothes or hippie clothes. They're asking you for spare change or they're trying to sell you pot. Very few people get the picture of a reasonably well-dressed uh, young black kid on Market Street. They don't think of a young Latino kid on Mission Street who's wearing gang colors. They don't think of a young woman on Cap Street who is out there selling her body. Those kids get other labels. They get labels like drug dealer, gang member, prostitute, or hooker. And consequently, I think those terms evoke a lot less sympathy than the phrase homeless youth. So what happens is rather than being targeted by services, those kids are targeted by law enforcement and they're looked at in a very harsh way. I think I met with him right away, if I remember right, because I was going through a lot and I needed to reach out to somebody and, <laughs> and he wasn't like the people on the street and I knew that. To me, I used to call him a square all the time. Rob was square and I knew that I could trust him because of that. Do they have chick curry chicken? Uh, I'm sure if they do beef curry, they'll do chicken curry if you ask. Like this week, have you felt tempted to go out or no? No. Well, the, the thought has came. Yeah. But I mean, it's like whatever, you know? And instead, I go do something for God, like go and do a Bible study or yeah. go pray or go do something, you know, things I haven't done in a long time. Yeah. And it feels good to me. So one of the challenges that these kids face is that a lot of them, they don't feel that good about themselves. They don't have a lot of hope. They don't have a lot of self-esteem. And if you feel like, I really don't believe that anything in my life is going to get better, why would you take the emotional risk of making yourself vulnerable by asking for help? My mom let me down. My mom is the one who turned me out to prostitution when I was 11 years old. And after she let me down, it was like I couldn't trust nobody after that. And literally until I met Rob, that was the only person, I, and especially a man. So when I met Rob, it was very different. You've been really upset with yourself and like, I don't know how to be a mom. I don't know how to be a healthy mom and a safe mom. And it's like, you do know, it's just not always easy to practice. Like last night, normally I get mad. <laughs> but this time I just picked her up and held her and kissed her and loved her. Aww. And she just stopped crying and she was happy, you know? I've told you before, like, I think you have the ability to be an amazing mother. I didn't see myself changing anytime soon until I found out I was pregnant with a little girl. And I think the reason why it was a little girl that changed me is because since I was abused my whole life, I felt like I had to protect her. That changed me. That changed everything about me. Just wanting to protect her changed me. Her name's Victorious, Dorica Burgess. Her middle name stands for Beloved Leader. So Victoria's beloved leader. And uh, I love that little girl. That's my life. And she's very sweet. But she is very strong-willed. <laughs> a lot, she's a lot like me. We don't have to provide a lot of answers for our clients. They provide them for themselves. Today I'm doing much better. I still have my struggles, but they're not nowhere near as bad as they used to be. Recently I received my GED. I'm very proud of that. My mind is in the right frame. It's focused on more positive things than the negative. We have the belief that every young person who we work with has the ability to lead an outstanding life. So when I say a great life, I mean the same things for themselves that you want for yourself. You know, love, passion, community, excitement, health, stability. All of these things that I know I'm searching for and most of the people in my life are striving for, we want that for our kids too. There's no cookie cutter formula for how you get that.